Ah, uh, welcome back, Ben. Vivat Grendel, sir. Vivat Grendel, Eli. We nice are back. back. Yeah, another week, man. It's been fun. Thanks for joining me. Yesterday, we had a Cosmic Lion radio uh, interview with Nick Cagnetti and Jamie Jones about their crossover book, The Baboon and Pink Lemonade Jamboree. That was fun. Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, I don't know good. those guys work that much, but they're, they're, they get like bigger and bigger in the uh, indie circles. So I got I to gotta check them both out. Yeah, and, that's, and it's a great place to start uh, if you want to learn about them. We got really deep into uh, process and how it all works. And if you're, you know, like a deep comic book fan, it's, it'll be a great watch. And we'll be uh, in the same YouTube feed as this. Here we are for episode eight of The Devil in Detail. The Devil in Detail. Uh, three more stories from Black, White, and Red. Um, but first, let's uh, let's get into our days. What have we what have we been up to? What you been up to? Actually, it's been two weeks since we we recorded. Yeah. So, so what you been up to, dude? Um, well, I uh, I wrapped up work on my top secret Grendel Zine project. Oh, it, it looks so good. Thanks, man. I think there's a few more moves that I need to need to make, but I had a really nice time doing that while digging deep into these black, white, and red stories. Yeah. Um, and uh, I. I've been playing around. Maybe you can play that video of my 3D pre-visualization work. been playing around more with the infamous frame forge and then today i taught a kids comics class on zoom at the through the new york film academy summer camp program oh that's so, awesome dude yeah i'm keeping keeping busy if you give them here's what i learned if you give the kids Dogman and reina they'll be eating out of your hands much easier than saying this is frank miller daredevil what do you what do you 10 year olds think They're not gonna. <laughs> so they were mm. once once they were not all of them knew Dogman, which kind of surprised me. But yeah. when I showed them, when I showed them the Reina, their eyes like lit up. It was it was amazing. <laughs> nice, yeah. Those it seems like that Dogman's really got the kids' comic book market on lock, mm -hmm. man. They love it. Yeah, it gives it gives a lot of hope to uh, you know your slashy, scratchy doodlers like the two of us. Exactly. Uh, I actually got for my nephew. He loves Dogman, and I found like a very similar Swamp Thing style book that DC put out. That, that we might have talked about this before, but yeah, it's it like off. in that Diary of a Wimpy Kid kind of style. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. Really cool. And I had my kids ask me about that one. They're like, "Is that comics too?" I was like, "Do you want it to be comics?" <laughs> like, yeah, of course. Is that comics too, Ben? Does Mr. Granoff? <laughs> well, can we can we draw animals instead of humans? You can do anything you want. Yeah. That's the beauty of comics, kid. Yeah. Now get out of here, you bother me. What else did you do? You did, did some reading on vacation, I take it? Oh, I read a lot of books. Actually, uh, Matt straight up recommended this book, Heracles, to me. It's a Line Forge book. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Man, just beautiful. Um, I, I loved it. I mean, I, obviously, I didn't think that Matt was going to tell me a book that wasn't awesome, but... I mean, it was really great. I'm definitely going to pick up the other two books. And it covers the 13 trials of Heracles, who um, grew into what we know as Hercules. Uh, and, um, you know, he had to do these three trials after his wife and kid were killed. And it really follows the, you know, Greek tragedy. It was awesome. I loved it. It's got that super blocky style. Like super blocky. Shoulders, yeah. yeah. It looks a lot like um, early... Ulysses Farinas work from what I from what I recall in the, the Activate days. Oh yeah. Wow, that's a nice book. Oh, it's very nice. Hardcover, beautiful spreads like this. Oh damn. Really that's creative good. cartooning. Um he he's talking with what we learned to be his like his his dead um like his pre his former teacher, which is kind of like this dead person right here. We learned that he crushed a uh um what's it called a, a harp on his head and that's why he has those horns 
And uh, there's just some really beautiful cartooning in here. I, I would definitely recommend this for anyone who who's into Greek stuff, who's into great comics, and um, is interested in you know what Matt reads himself. Yeah, that looks that looks really cool, man. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful book. Um, today I I did a bunch of stuff. I I braved the uh, the world. Uh, I went to my comic book shop got some books, um, went to, and get this, the Department of Motor Vehicles. Oh, no. <laughs> the DMV, I mean, I have, like, you know, right when the, the quarantine started, my driver's license expired. And so I haven't had a valid driver's license the entire time. And for a while, places like liquor stores and stuff that check your ID, they would, they would take my excuse like oh i can't get one the dmv is not accepting this blah 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 but now there's a new thing in place and they're like we can't accept um you know expired licenses i can't go to, you know I, the liquor store doesn't usually card but the weed store does and other places like that so i couldn't even get in so i finally got found it online i made an appointment i uploaded my docs i scanned my birth certificate my social i sent it all in and man i went to the dmv today and like if this is the dmv and like the, the front door is here, the line was all the way around here oh my God. and then down the street. And I was like, there's no way I'm doing this. But like I set this up online. It says just like go to the front and tell them you have like an expedited thing that you filled out online. So I was like, okay, I'll try it. I went in and talked to the lady and she's like, you wait right here where there's no line. And I was like, oh my God, no way. And then they brought me right in and I went to the desk and the lady had saw all my documents and she's like, you have no idea how much time you save by <laughs> going online. And I'm like, Oh my God, I actually think I do. And she's like, you've literally saved yourself the entire day. Wow. And I was like, Oof. I, I was so it. happy at that point for like, you know, for online stuff. And I was in yeah. and out of there in like 20 minutes. It was, it was insane. I've been there yeah. um, where you do the right thing and uh, you go, you figure out when to go. And, um, it was like, they would go, all right, take these and fill them out. And by the time I sit down to take out my pen, my number's been called. <laughs> oh, my God. It felt so good. And I, yeah. But I felt so bad for all those people that are, like, there all day. They're there the yeah. entire day. Well, we can't all be expedited. We can all be expedited. You know, that's the thing. If we're all expedited, then everyone's waiting. So Exactly. Yeah, we don't forget me. But um, it's a great day for Grenolin and another day. So why don't we just kick it? Into the theme. Two in the box, ready to go. Fast with any snow. Yeah. Yeah. Viva Grenoble. It's like the devil is my best friend. On the rolls with the pen to the fork end. Or to time end. Like Orion. Jupiter, my kin, bloodline, private. Control the whole shit The wolf won't beef Then we feast off the rip Behold the devil in detail Behold the devil in detail Alright What a theme song, Ben Thank you, Madison and Zach As always, you guys rule um, We got three stories from Black, White, and Red Although there's a slight asterisk in there So nice. we're gonna do Woodrow Phoenix Devil's Witness we're going to do Dean Motter, Devil's Vagary, and we're going to do Guy Davis, Devil's Labyrinth. But that second one, the Dean Motter, Devil's Vagary story, as I understand it, was not in the original Black, White, and Red run. Is that, is that the story? That's correct. It was originally included in the, in the Kamiko Collection comic book kind of box set thing um, that I will show when we get there. Cool. All right. Um, but chronologically, it was like the first black, white, and red stories from 87. Yes. And, and all the rest of these stories are published over a decade later, I think. Right. And it was the first one maybe not drawn by Matt Wagner. And it was kind of like mm. uh, the first story that happened out of place, I guess. And maybe even, you know, g gave him the idea to be like, oh, this could be cool to get other people to, to draw it and look how good this looks. I, I think that story is amazing as well. I'm excited to talk about it. We'll get into it. First yes, up, uh, Woodrow Phoenix, Devil's yes. Witness. Exactly. Very interesting art style. I love it. Singular, uh, cool use of the red this time. Mm 
uh, a little bit about him, Woodrow Phoenix. He um, he has a he's best known for his strip Rumble Strip, which was published in 2008. It's a nonfiction look at a the difficult social issues arising from society's dependence on the automobile. Wow, so that's cool. He's a British uh, cartoonist. Uh, notable works: Rumble Strip, Sugar Buzz, and the Sumo Family. I got this yeah, from um, the most trusted place on the internet. Sure. Yeah, um, he has a very design-heavy style. Yeah. I feel like the first times that I when I look when I when I look at this, the person that comes to mind the most is Paul Grist. I agree. It's a, it's a very simple flat style. Although this is probably even simpler and and flatter than Paul Grist. And the thing that really grabs my attention um, is the sense of design of the layouts. Um, Agreed. It's, it's yeah. a very, I can, it's very easy to see what about Mr. Phoenix's work Matt kind of connected to or was trying to harness in this story. Agreed. Yeah. And, and the character name too is an obvious shout out to Brian Michael Bendis. Uh, his name is Michael Bendis Hayes. Yeah, Michael and, Bendis Hayes is a society type. He's mm -hmm. got red hair. That's the black, white, and red, or some of it. That's the red. And, uh, he's he spends what seems like ten hours in a in a police interrogation room. Exactly, and he's and he's kind of the framing device, one of those classic cop framing devices where they're interrogating him and they're like, "Tell us everything about the night in question," and he's like, "Well." <laughs> The night begins at, it is uh, 35 minutes past midnight and 46 seconds. And I know that because the other use of red is the second hand on this recurring clock, which is a really, a really cool device. Very wow. simple and just like, and to the point, like how long the cops make Mr. Bendis Tays sweat it out for. Wow, I didn't even, I didn't even make that connection. I didn't even notice that that it's is a, cool it's a tiny little sliver so yeah. it's you know it's and and it you know those clocks do have red second hands so yeah they do they're drawing very, you right into it it's very cool yeah i like it a lot oh cool that's great i didn't even notice that that it's so creative they're all in there like and again that makes me think was that a direction from matt in his script was that just something that phoenix did or let's like you know we don't we don't know my guess is that well, well we can ask matt but my guess is that he's handpicking people that he wants them. Right. right. He wants to play to their strengths. And so, you know, there are a few places here where the artists are going directly to their, I don't want to say comfort zones, but to what they do or what they're known for best. David right. Mack is definitely a guy who did that. Uh, the Jim Mofford story is like, it doesn't need to be a Grendel story. It's just a quintessential Jim Mofford. Yeah, for sure. Spray paint um, on trains. Yeah, and, and so I think that Matt gives gives these artists a, as much leeway as they want because he wants them. Exactly. I agree. And, and they all do it well. And, and, and they pull out the stops and put in really cool devices. Cool. And so Anyways. we get to the next page, and he's starting to tell them about, about the night. He takes this strange drag off his join her at yeah. and uh it looks like he's sucking a lollipop or something like that but yeah. like it, like technically it would kind of be like i guess it would be right it's a very weird it's it's a very weird uh hand pose <laughs> but what i what i really dig is the way that we got this four beat top tier yeah the smoke breaking the the border of that fourth panel right. is like that's the kind of comics mechanics it's it's really simple but like, if you want me in, I'm in. Like that, for some reason, that those kinds of design considerations really turned me on. Yeah, I like that stuff too. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I like the back and forth between the cops. They keep messing his name up. Hayes, Bendis Hayes, you know, and, and yep. there's the, the real good cop, bad cop kind of thing going on. He's really like blase. He's like, I'm getting there. You know, he's kind of like, you know, and he knows his stuff. He knows exactly what's happening. The Heinrich Sloss was performing Beethoven's third piano concerto, you know, and he, you know, like you said, he's a society type. He was there for the evening. Yeah. The and cross cutting between his head on the gray field and then his recollection of the memory is a, 
another really simple divine, d- design device exactly. that I that I enjoy. Anyway, so he's he's there, and uh, he and he and Mario take a break to canoodle a little bit in the vestibule. Yep, they slip so, out a little bit. I don't think it's like they take a break. I think maybe he, Mario's there with someone else. Maybe a, a oh, interesting, or something like that. Yeah, it was and, funny because there's definitely an air of secrecy about sure. it. Um, and like this, they locked eyes across the concert and were like, "Let's mm-hmm. go down to the bathroom, right?" And they go yeah. and make yeah. out and have yeah. like their tryst. Their tryst, yeah. And this this story is presumably taking place in a retro noir cyberpunk 1982. Right, kind of so, where all of the Grendel, the Hunter Road stories take place. Right, so maybe at that point, it, uh, being gay wasn't as easy, and so they had to find these little times to sneak out to like profess their love, attraction, sexual, whatever. Sure. Anyway, so they uh, sneak he's... out, and he's like all like, ah, "I'm hot as hell." <laughs> he's psyched about it, and he's yeah. walking away, kind of. Uh, redoing his bow tie right so and then he and then this is interesting to me i just want to make sure i understand like the the logistical setup of these buildings Mm -hmm. there's the the concert hall that they're in and then through a window in the concert hall through another window in the building like across an alley or next door he sees grendel well here's what i'm thinking like um he, he steps out for a sig so maybe he goes out on this he's balcony. He's outside, okay. Right. Mm-hmm. So he's on a balcony and maybe, you know, I, I'm thinking like, okay, I've been to the Walt Disney Concert Hall here in LA. There's a back kind of vestibule area. And if you're standing on at the very end on the wall, you can see out into like some apartments. And I've actually, you know, we'll, we'll be like, oh, you know, what's in that nice downtown apartment, you know? So I can understand that he was outside. He was maybe high up. He was able to look down into this like uh, next door building uh, just enough to see some grand. Him. Yeah. That's, that's when I saw him. Him. Are you sure it was him? Yes, of course it was him. The mask, the fork. He was I, called I am. Yeah, right. The, the poses here are really quintessential Grendel. Um, oh, is, and the man, is he a man? Did you think that was like, like, is he a man or is he a demon or is he a man because he's a little androgynous? I think he's almost like he, he's, he's more than a man. And maybe because he tussles with Argent so often, perhaps it's like, is he even a man? Is he some sort of demon? Is what I was thinking. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and I love this pose in the last panel. Um, it's incredibly it similar to the... Um, the poses that Tim Sale puts him in. Yeah, I was thinking it, and because we're dealing with like another book, another, um, mm-hmm. what's the word? A ledger. Uh, a ledger, yeah, another yeah. ledger. Uh, Grendel deals a lot in ledgers. I mean, if this was a little bit later, it would all just be on computers and he wouldn't have so many books to kick open. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But um, he probably loves kicking those books open. The, the, <laughs> the power he feels when he kicks that math. Yeah, another design uh, flair that, Woodrow Phoenix uses are the seams on the back of the boots, which oh, I right. enjoy quite a bit. Not right. everyone draws them. Um, Mike Allred drew them quite well. Right. Um, but I wonder if that's like a fencing boot type of thing or if that's maybe. Yeah, it's, it's an aspect of the costume that kind of makes it feel more real. Kind of like the Daredevil costume looks like a boxer's. Right. Kind Especially of that old yellow one when he had like the trunks and stuff yeah yeah and the so. the um like tank top kind of yeah cool so yeah that's the black one he kicked open a ledger that had been lying on the desk very spiteful if you ask me and, and there's another one there's another back and forth between the cops that i kind of like like he's like you know i was on the way to the bathroom upstairs and they're like we know the layout continue and they keep doing that they keep they keep you know kind of roughing him up yeah well his story not to get too far ahead his story is a little too straight. A little too straight, a little too known and perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then on the next page, we get another really cool, like the simple, cool Grendel, you know, and he's just right up in his face. He, I guess that, you know, because we don't know exactly what Grendel's doing because we're only getting like an outside look. 
he's telling whoever this guy is, you're not doing your business the way I'm, I'm squeezing you to do your business. Get with the program or you're dead. Yeah. Look, it's right here in the ledger. Like I almost think that he opened it with his foot and then maybe put the, yeah, put the fork right. right down and was like right there, you know, or something yeah. like that. Anyway, Bendis Hayes admits that he can't not look away. He's a bit of a, a voyeur, exactly. which is another detail where it's like, it's like a little, the story is like a little too perfect where it's like, why well, I, I had to look. I had you know? to look. <laughs> and, and I like the detail too of him being like, I could even see myself like reflected in the mirror on the wall behind Grendel, you know? Yeah. Which is like, I mean, that would be the, the second where I was like, oh, hell no, 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 no. Like, I can't watch this. You know, right. Because if you can see someone in a mirror, then they can see. Right. They can see you. Right. So it's, mm. yeah, this one's, this one's a little tough because the mirror doesn't, the, the design simplicity of the drawing doesn't necessarily read as a mirror. It, it could be an inset panel. Right. Or it kind of looks like he, he's peering in a window from behind Grendel. Right. Which Grendel. is, you know, what it, which is what it, it looked like anyhow. Yeah. So this is, this is where he tells the cops. Okay. So the cops are asking details about the ledger. Right. Which they, say they, had, they found no evidence yeah. of any book, any ledger. ledger. Um, he says, I, I must have blacked out. So I mean, when the violence happens, he, he blacks out. So this guy's definitely dead on his desk. Mm -hmm. Ledger or no. Okay. You know what they call it when they keep track of the activities they do for fun? That, that would be a leisure ledger. A leisure ledger. Leisure ledger. Uh, also, there's a delicious candy bar that is very good in ice cream. Uh, ben and Jerry's has a great version of it, but uh, they keep track of their money in a Heath ledger. That's good. Hey, thanks. I write jokes you, as you, they come in my head. You are you are uh, impresario. I love the I love the pointed and seamed boots um, in the panel oh, that, with the dead body. Yeah. Really, and again, really nice. Yeah. And and the, and it still kind of shows movement and and. I don't know, the skinny feet prove that he's agile and that he's this like, you know, something that could be considered like more than human. More human than human. One thing that I really like about Woodrow Phoenix's art is look at the tangent that's created in the guy's knuckle and in the foot. Right. It has a very casual, like laissez-faire, warts and all kind of approach to it where it's like, this is a drawing mistake but it's not a mistake because I drew it and it looks awesome. What are you going to do about it? Right. That's um, how all, his foot was. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah. It, it, it almost reminds me of like very casual, ragged line 1950s illustration. Mm. Kind of like the Teddy Christensen approach that we talked about the other week. Yeah, exactly. All right, cool. And then now we can really see the time passing. It's what, 3, 3 a.m.? Yeah, about... Um, 15 minutes or so pass between these two panels of just more grilling, more sweating it out, making him go over the story again and again and again. Yeah. And it's, and it's definitely seeing, we're seeing a good cop, bad cop motif. Mm -hmm. I, I like the shading that they got on this bald guy is um, like the gray that he's using the gray tones for like mm -hmm. the cheeks and the, and the eyes. I think that looks really good. Yeah. Again, simplistic, but uh Gets the job done. Super great. clear. It's not. Yeah. It's it's never not visually clear. However, I will say that th here's a, here comes a plot point that is a little bit over my head. Okay. You said you weren't sure whether you might have seen someone in the halls. This is very important because we found no evidence of forced entry. He must have entered from inside. I'm not. I'm not really sure what's being said here. I think it's, I think that has something to do with Grendel. I mean, like climbing the walls and, and yeah, all I was that. thinking, see, at first, my first thought was like Hunter Rose was at the recital, changed to Grendel, jumped from, you know, the roof to roof or something roof, like yeah. that. Yeah. So like he, he was somewhere as Hunter and managed to infiltrate without breaking, without doing anything but i mean that's just what grendel does perhaps at yeah. the time it's not as clear grendel's mo maybe um may, uh the, the killer maybe even met with his victim somewhere at the at the recital 
So it's just, I'm just a little, maybe Diana can help us out with this, what's going on in a, in a number of weeks. Okay. But I'm, a li- I'm just a little confused. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'm a little fucked up, uh, you know, maybe it's just me. Yeah, you know, hey, I don't think so. I, I mean, it, it's kind of unclear too, because maybe maybe it means nothing or something. Maybe it's just the cops trying to like, you know. Play a head game. Yeah, grind him and, and you know, make yeah. him say something that maybe wasn't there or something. Well, there's a there's definitely an element of this heavy crime plotting stuff where I think the Hunter Rose is brilliant. He's not five steps ahead of the reader. He's twenty five steps ahead of the reader. Yeah, he's never so, going to show any like signs of break in. He's never going to show any signs of struggle or fight or. Well, I just mean when I'm confused with the, uh, with the crime stories. Like I'm, I feel like I'm supposed to be a little confused. Well, yeah, I mean, it's part of it. We, we don't, we can't even know all of the stuff that, you know, Grendel does or that he's, you know, it could even be that the doorman is in his pay or that mm. the guy who, you know, he's got a helicopter pilot or right. he's got everything. On this page, Woodrow Phoenix's use of the uh, slim vertical panels is really nice. There's five of them. They're all the same size, and they fit together in a very cool sense of design, creates wonderful rhythms. And here, uh, Bendis Hayes says, and then Grendel looked straight at me. Oh, my God. Great panel. Great panel right there. Yeah, those little red, uh, four little red speed lines. Yeah, and again, the, the simplicity and yet the, like, action and fear. Like, he looked straight at me, and most of the time when someone looks straight at you, it's their eyes. Yeah, they're, they're not wearing in. a mask. <laughs> right, but, but you know, Grendel was so penetrating that he can look into your soul and you don't even need eyes. He doesn't even need eyeballs for you to look at, you know? Okay, so this is where I'm a little confused again. They okay. ask him if he wants to look at a lineup, and he's like, absolutely. What do you think I'm here for? Yeah, but, but who, but I'm not sure they're, who they're talking about. Because I would presume that the guy with the ledger is now dead. Grendel yeah. doesn't wound people that he's yelling at. You know, he no. kills them. And Grendel, are they, are they trying to find Grendel? He said Grendel was wearing a mask. Yeah, I think, I think they're trying to find someone that he saw immediately after in order to prove his, his alibi or something like that. Because they're like, you came out the second from the left, I recognize the hairline. Like, I can't be sure as I was running for my life. So previously, when you said you couldn't understand, they were asking him. Then he uh, bumped into somebody, someone who's corroborating. Someone. Oh, someone who's corroborating his story independently of him. Exactly. Okay. It, like his whereabouts at the time, that he wasn't, say, involved with Grendel or he wasn't part of, you know, that. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit embarrassing for me to be like, I don't really understand what's going on here. <laughs> But I'll, I'll be I'll be humble enough to say when I don't, and there's yeah. always a there's usually a pretty good answer. So That's why you. we got two minds working on this thing together, yeah, and, yeah. and being able to talk it out is a little different than just reading it in your head. Yeah, yeah. Totally. More of more of the clock, yeah, sweating like it out. Almost uh, five a.m. now. Oh, God, He's... what time is it when it starts? It's like twelve. It's like eleven forty-five. Yeah, it is. Oh God. Yeah. So. Oh man, it, he's been there forever, chain smoking and just being grilled with questions. Yeah, and then he's like, "Good." I think that this bald cop is modeled after Woodrow Phoenix. I think it, I think it might be a self insert. Oh yeah, Tight. but then I'm kind of thinking too. Uh, the behold the devil too. There's the black cop that we follow around for most. Oh, interesting. Of that as well, could although he wears he wears a very distinctive pair of glasses. Yeah, yeah, that's true. He's a great character. Oh, God, what a heartbreaker. Oh, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. I, I can't wait. <laughs> um, anyway, so here's where, here's where you, know, uh, you know, more evidence that I should not, you know, work as a police detective. So they tell him that his lineup selection was a bust. The man with the hairline that you picked out was one of the first police officers to arrive on the scene. Um, he's plain clothes, doesn't wear a hat, and that's where you remember his hairline from. I, okay. I guess, yeah, I, I guess it's, I'm not, I'm not totally sure what they're getting at with this. I, yeah. It's hard to say. It, it is. It is hard to say. 
just, yeah, I don't know. So Bendis Hayes really freaks out. He's a, so um, he's got to go. I, I did the best I could. Are you going to let me go or are you going to charge me with something? I didn't fucking do anything. Nope. <laughs> Which <laughs> he did something. He's doing, he's, I mean, yeah. he's, pur- and, he's purging uh, himself. It, seems it like. might be too that they have him in there for some other crime that happened. It, like we don't know we don't we hardly know anything about this guy right exactly you know at this point all right so the cops are like jesus like we've been at it for six hours let's let this guy go they still can't get his last name right <laughs> yeah and i uh, forgot to say before whenever he was like i went out for a smoke terrible habit and the cops like we know how cigarettes work <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's funny yeah it's well that's like that's like don't get cute with the storytelling just right. like just stick just with stick with your stick with your story so we can you know bust you on on the yeah on what really consistencies yeah. yeah all right so don't leave don't leave town for the time being well no shit on that sherlock <laughs> i've never heard that that phrasing of uh no it's of, usually of just no idiot. shit sherlock yeah yeah well that's what my that's what my father-in-law tells me all the time Oh yeah, he's like no shit, short all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with with his British accent. With a British accent? Oh okay. no, no. Well, you. Did. Oh, I did. Yeah. yeah, who knows what that accent was? Didn't yeah. Sense. All right. So now it's it's seven a.m. Yeah, he comes uh, out and uh, I get a little bit of a uh, usual suspects vibe here at the end. Oh yeah, yeah. I was I was thinking in these first three panels that there's almost a. Um, is almost a nod to vampirism. Just ah, okay. I, and, and it's really subtle, and I, that might just be me reading into it, but if I read into something that's relevant to a major motif in the story, then it's still there. Right. You know? uh, we, don't, we don't see Hunter Rose interact with any vampires or anything yet, but that... I don't think he... No, just, just zombies. It's just later, yeah. Just, just voodoo zombies and voodoo, in yes, the, exactly in the, in the last, last story yeah. Yeah. Panda Brothers. and werewolves of course of course absolutely so i mean that just leaves it wide open to many denizens well look who's here it's helpful larry mm-hmm. interesting and you, no, okay so this confuses me cake, he said well larry says you had until eight o- eight o'clock i'm impressed um he kind of like was able to talk and talk his way out of the police station maybe they had until eight o'clock until like larry was going to come in and intervene or maybe until he was going to be like all right that's it or that's the amount of time that you need to kill misdirecting the investigation so that other business can get done it's just like it's 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 speaking to what i'm saying like there's a lot of vague criminal dealings going on that you're not supposed i don't think we're supposed to be fully privy to right. exactly what's going on because it's being conducted by a criminal mastermind right like the point of view that we're given is that of the cops which is confused and trying to figure out all this stuff whereas we have michael bendis here who's who seemingly is like you said diverting and, and given all this extra information to try to like you know, beef up his story that I guess he really doesn't have much to go on, but I guess it seems like he had more. He knew more than we gave him credit for. Well, when he wants to go after eight hours of being interrogated, I don't doubt him. It's not like, it's not like, Oh, I wish I could have stayed longer. You know, he's like freaking out. He's been, he's had two packs of cigarettes. Like (laughs) he's got to go. Yeah. Anyway, so, so anyway, so, like I told you, piece of cake. They think their guy was a swindler on the wrong side of Grendel. Oh, sure, it was a bit grueling. I don't mind telling you that. But in the end, they bought the quaking eyewitness bit. I think that... Um, okay, so the lie is that it was a swindler on the wrong side of Grendel. Maybe they're attributing another murder to Grendel. Maybe... I, I right. don't know. Something maybe, is, something's not quite right there. Maybe, maybe um, he. Maybe it was something think, that he, he was Grendel. covering up. No, he didn't. He no. didn't see Grendel. No. Right. The lie is that 
They, they, for some reason, they are trying to connect Grendel to something else other than all the other stuff he's doing over here. Right. I think that's my, that's my best bet. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It, it is a little confusing in the motivations for everyone in this story, really. Yeah. And that's probably part of the storytelling. It's to, con- it's to confuse you because it, it seems as though no one other than Grendel knew really what was going on. Even, even Larry here, even Larry was like, just did what he was told it, as much. Interesting. Well, it's such a, it's such a straightforward and direct visual style that the misdirection of the writing really becomes oh, yeah. like, oh, I, I'm going to be able to grok this one, no problem. And you're like, whoa, what's uh, going on? Maybe not. And, and sometimes, and you know, sometimes the hook in these stories is like, you know, it's solved right at the end, and so you're waiting for that quick solve, but we don't really get. Well, it. The, there is a little bit of a twist. First, Larry. Uh, offers Mr. Bendis Hayes some pink champagne, mm-hmm. which is uh, which is interesting. I don't think this book is called Black, White, Red, and Pink. That's but, true. But um, it is it is implied at the end by Larry that it's potentially poison. Right. Right. So Randall um, doesn't. Um... Uh, what does he say? He um, more of an extermination. The old goat had a taste for fucking little girls. Okay, so we know Grendel hates that more than anything. So the old goat being the guy with the ledger who gets stabbed. I believe so. Okay, and, and so, so he did okay. And, and so maybe the cops were then trying to figure out why would he kill him? Like it has to do with money dealings. It has to do oh. with this. But maybe it was just like Grendel exterminating someone for being a you know, disgusting because Grendel, because that's what he, that. that's what he does. Yeah. One doesn't go to this much effort to flush a rat, a rat. You simply poison. Oh. And yeah. as he's drinking his pink, his pink lemonade, his yeah. Nick Cagnetti pink lemonade. <laughs> he does a spit take and, and then <laughs> foams a little and dies. Well, I, I like, I like the Larry Coda here. I do too, yeah. Um, I, I like seeing Larry doing stuff and, and being out and about. And, and I mean, it doesn't even say, he's not like, you know, what's up, Larry, or anything. It's just, it's just implied that it's Larry. Yeah. But he's smoking a cigarette and, you know, he's got the hair, so we know. Yeah, he's got the, he's got the white hair and the suit. The look. Um, yeah, it's a little embarrassing to say I, that the story, sometimes the stories are over my head. But, but I okay. think, yeah, it's and I okay. think it's part of it. Like, <laughs> like we're sounding out here. Like, yeah. it's not meant to be straightforward. It's meant to confuse, and um, that's because that's what Grendel did to everyone around him. No one knew what he had in his mind and what right. exactly he wanted to do. He had his own agenda, and he was the only one privy to it. What a segue into the Devil's Vagary by Dean Motter. Devil's Vagary. All right. So a little bit about how this one. Oh, excuse me. How this one was released. I'll show you here. So it came in this Kamiko collection, which is a collection. It, I can you know, it's it's very much a promo for Kamiko. We have this really cool poster featuring like the entire like catalog of Kamiko's characters. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's really cool. So it's got Grendel and Mage in there, and um, you know the Elementals, Johnny Quest, uh, everything really. Uh, we even have Mirth over here in the corner, which is kind of cool. Oh, there he is. Yeah. And, and Mage over here. So that's uh, one cool part that's kind of like wrapped around the outside. I've always toyed with getting that framed. But then you just got a stack of comics in here. Um, I'll just quickly show you that it's like, you know, Star Blazers. We got these cool, these Kamiko attractions, which I really like. Um, I actually bought a bunch of them off eBay. But this has a really cool burning around. Oh, super cool! Yeah, that would be a cool. So it's so the box is ten random Kamiko books, not necessarily Grendel books. That's correct. Yeah, just Kamiko. Your guide, to great reading. And so it kind of tells you a little bit here. There's the Kamiko collection. What all comes inside? Uh, it's a, and here we go. So it's an all new 16 page comic written by Matt Wagner and illustrated by Dean, Mr. X Motter, featuring Hunter Rose, the original Grendel persona. This story is presented on glossy paper stock and printed in black, white, and red. Oh boy. Yeah. The comic Ding. will not be ava- available anywhere else and can only be obtained by purchasing this collection. 
It's a stunning first time collaboration between these two highly respected creators. And then you get 10 random Kamiko back issues, a beautiful full color Kamiko poster, and a copy of the informational newsletter, Kamiko Attractions. Cool. Super, super cool. Hey, so it's a $22 value for only $9.95. In 1987. Right. Next Man, Johnny Quest, Evangeline, Robotech, Robotech Masters, Robotech The New Generation, Elementals, Grendel number seven. All right. Yeah, not too bad. Justice Machine and Star Blazers. Do you know um do you know much about Dean Modder besides he's done a long running indie noir book called Mr. X? I don't know. and I haven't read Mr. X either. Oh shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. It's it's one of those books that when it's brought up, uh, especially in the circle that we run in, it is matter of factually celebrated. Matt or um, factually? <laughs> yeah, right. It's Dean Urm actually. Uh, <laughs> but I've never you know, it's like, oh, it's a book that Dark Horse will occasionally put out. That's my that's my knowledge of it. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to check it out now because he he does a really great job in in, yeah. in this. And so here's what it looks like. You you had mentioned before, like it doesn't have a cover, and and essentially it doesn't. It's kind of just right there. First page and last page is right on the back. Uh, we have some credits on here that we didn't have previously. It is edited by Diana, lettered by Deborah Marks, and illustrated by Dean Motter. October I th- 87. I think that Deborah Marks was a frequent collaborator of Dean Motter's. I read that she may have inked the third, either inked or wrote the third volume of Mr. X. Oh, wow. Back in 19, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. whatever it was. But I think that Deborah Marks deserves a, a really special shout out here because the lettering is super unique and kind of on a level that you don't typically get with standard comics fair timing and placement is really really strongly considered in this work very much so and the flows well well maybe sometimes confusing they're very um uh it, i mean it's the pace and feel of like a real conversation a real yeah. meeting and 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 once you get the feel of it all it really it reads yeah because like it very it, well it bucks most conventions of standard comic book lettering mm. the first right out the gate is that it's color coded so every time grendel speaks the narrative caption has a red background right and I am, white text yeah oh that's right and i am such a sucker for that device um because i think it helps you know there's a lot of places where comics like you know mainstream pot boiler stuff gets um, like tangled up with word balloons and placements and tails doing weird things where it's just like, well, if you have a weird placement, just color code the the thing and you don't even need a tail. Right. You know, if I know that Thor is always light green in this scene, then I'm not going to be confused where the, you know, where the balloon is. Right. And, and it's actually interesting because at other points, characters do get balloons, but Grendel never does. Yeah. He, the whole oh, time oh, that's right. boxes there's no thought bubbles or whatever mm-hmm. for Grendel this whole issue there's no there's no uh, pointers or tails correct whichever whichever you prefer I always thought it was I always thought it was uh, tails and then my pro letterer who's doing our book would only call them pointers and so I started huh. <laughs> well, he must well he must know <laughs> so, yeah yeah he's professional all right all right devil's vagary I Googled the word vagary. I think it I was going to do that. Great. Yeah. What is it? I think it means change. Okay. The devil's and change. Hmm. And, and the, one, the one most obvious change here is that we're seeing a shift from Hunter as young assassin and, and, and finally doing his boardroom crime lord stuff and dealing with someone besides you know, the notorious, uh, who is the driver? Kendrick? I don't know what his name was. But Larry, you know, typically Larry's the only guy that he deals with. And now there's like seven people sitting around the boardroom. Exactly. Yeah. And they all seemingly are from different, you know, sections of his crime empire. They're different families. There's kind of like a, you know, like an Italian last name. There's like a Jewish last name. There's kind of, it seems like there's from these different 
um, families or something like that. So he's, it's really got the like mob boss feel. Kind of reminds me of that, the scene from uh, the beginning of the Crow comic and movie where he goes into the, the that room and just kills everyone uh, at the at the boardroom table and stuff. And yeah, it, it's really like everyone, a check-in. Good. Yeah, everybody represents a different racket or industry. Some more legitimate than others. Right. Um, that Hunter has his his fingers in, and um, they're you know they're talking business at a level which I am not embarrassed to say I don't really I don't really understand what they're doing because I'm not an executive and I don't live in a corporate world. Right. But, and I mean, it, again, like, you know, sometimes you say, I, I don't read all the words. I look more so at the pictures here. For me? <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's almost to the point where each and every word is not incredibly important. What is important is that there's heavy shit going on. They're talking about, you know, business and, and, Hunter Grendel is right there. I mean, he's, he knows exactly what he wants, exactly when, what he wants to hear. And, you know, he's, he's in it, in it to yeah. win it. He, he's, he never flinches and he never second guesses. And he also, for many of these guys, he, he takes a little bit of advice from some of them. He does. And he, and he, and he uh, pushes some of them around a little bit. And, um, you know, depending on who they are. So anyway, let's see the first uh what's the first thing you're talking about the uh the on the first page well the first thing on the main page is casinos he's asking about casinos Bally's oh, that's and, right and claridge report a decrease seven eight percent that's over what we allow they claim they have their record slump and and you know so it's really like big and, and i think that this guy on the second page here where he's like um calm down costello your throat is very fleshy and wobbles in such an unhealthy manner when you become so you know, uh, yeah, he looks like the Donald. He does look like the Donald. Exactly. Yeah. I really like that. Uh, so dot, dot, dot. When you become so he's saying when you become so, or is he stopping himself from lacing into the guy? Even uh, further? Yeah. You might be right. Like, because he has this code. I yeah. Think, the right? gentleman thief. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so he's not yeah, going to so, like call him like a disgusting Cheeto or whatever. He's going to. Yeah. So Costello, uh, all right, so the casinos, then the brothels, and then Costello starts talking about um, like the labor union stuff and right. running numbers. And, Strike plans and yeah. stuff. Oh. Um, yep. all right. uh, there's no change, regular intake, and then, you know, he checks in with Santos, uh, who's talking about, you know, seems like some government and the docks and, and, and yeah, import-export stuff. Yeah, importer-exporter. Uh, this is a place where what you were talking about, the, the lettering and the organization of things uh, is, is um, you know, pro. It, it's like Black Diamond. Yeah. Really, really, yeah, Black Diamond. Really cool choices being made here, yeah. especially how Santos paces out his own dialogue. Right, because right. if if it wasn't color coded, you might think, oh, someone might be interrupting him. But he's the acting quality is really, really strong. Very strong. Yeah. So they're talking. I think they're talking about bribing dock workers to get with the program. So right. I which which I think is what comes in uh, to play a little bit later uh, in yeah. the story. When we right, because it takes docks. place. There's. Do they There's talk about the arms? Day. Yeah, it's an arms deal later on, but... Okay. Uh, then we get in with Rothstein, who's yeah, uh, got oh, the oh, diamonds. Yeah, I wonder what he's into. <laughs> he's got the diamonds, and uh, gold's actually on a substantial drop, but Grendel was ready for that. That's well, all he, he, gives him the, he gives him the least hard time. He's like, all right, great. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I trust the Jews. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, and he's like, fine. And then he talks with Farine. Uh, who talks about the drugs? What about the dust? Right. So and this is like, the second mention of PCP. Right. But then he's kind of like the dust is on the way out, and what's coming in is XTC. Yeah. The band is going to tour and has a big tour. I really like how uh, this guy's cigarette smoke kind of blends in with the balloon tails. Oh yeah. I think oh, that's great. That. And then it also kills the panel borders, which. You know me, I'm a sucker for that. Like anytime yeah. 
I already said this. Anytime you get like interaction between a narrative element and a design element, I'm there. It's great. And, yeah. and smoke is so fun to play with in, uh, in any type of cartooning, man. I, there was one, there was a, um, a 60s mad that I used to read. And I think uh, Sergio Argani's did like a mad look at drugs or something like that. Mm -hmm. And there was this one panel of this guy exhaling like weed smoke. And it completely destroyed the panel border. And inside the smoke were all these like spirals and like a whole nother like Sergio, you know, mini <laughs> scene. And it was just like, oh my God, it was so awesome. I always used to try to uh, try to do stuff like that. Yeah, that's very that's very mind. Sergio putting stuff in the margin. I mean, that's so much, Matt yeah. and Sergio to the T. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. All right. So, All right, so yeah, the ecstasy. It's like it's a new. It's the new hot thing, and so Grendel's like, yeah, we'll have to. We'll check in on it maybe once the FDA moves away from it, or maybe once the FDA really makes it illegal. Then we'll I'm just curious about the mention of of the angel dust because previously mentioned, it was one of four businesses that he wasn't going to be involved in. Oh, that's right. Right? It was, it was the, the child porn exploitation stuff. Yeah. It was angel dust, um, evangelical uh, profiteers, and real estate assholes. Those were the people that he wasn't going to like, deal with. That's the, four, that's the shit list. Maybe it was kind of like at this point, he's got to just like have his hand in these things. Like, yeah. He can't well, that's what it. happened to the Corleones. It's like... The heroin came in, and if we don't deal with it, someone else will. Well, maybe this, too. He said, Grendel's saying, what about the dust? And he's like, tough. Word on the streets, no. It's just too hard to get now because of Grendel. Grendel made it scarce because he's yeah, like, right. I don't like angel dust. That's not my drug of choice. I'm the devil. Nothing with angel. Does ecstasy, um, I don't know. Does the history of ecstasy link up with this? in real world in terms of when it emerges on the street do you think yeah i would think so i mean it seems kind of like it came mid -late would, 80s. yeah 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 but i i feel like it's big heyday wasn't until maybe the 90s though. the 90s yeah yeah that's when i did all my right. fair share of ecstasy <laughs> just kidding. all right but I'm not. and then it's uh oh to sergeant schultz i see nothing i hear nothing mm -hmm. this is a great uh, drawing Wait, you say sergeant? Why do you say sergeant? Does he oh, say that's from that's from uh, Hogan's Heroes. Oh, okay, that's right. You're not talking about <laughs> Dwight Schultz, who played on the A Team as well as Barkley on Star Trek. Oh no, mm, no another great Schultz. Another great Schultz is in history, <laughs> and great Schutz is in history. Okay. Oh yes, some of the best. So we've got uh, Schutz. Yeah. This is now. This is interesting. This is the Hollywood stuff. So this is the. Um, you know, one of few legitimate businesses that they have their hands in. And here we have a mention of our, our friend, Anson Reynolds. Oh, that's right. That's Wait, right. Where did we hear him before? So Anson Reynolds appears in Devil by the Deed, and he's very much supposed to be like that Corleone family associate Hollywood producer. And Nuncio brings the hot spice to the cops that Grendel has accepted his first hit on Anson Reynolds and it's going to be in public and that's where Argent falls through the, oh. through the roof. So this obviously takes place before, before. before that. And so, but it also gives us a little bit of uh, like backstory precedence. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, precedence that this guy um, is giving us a little bit of a hard time Remind him that recent wounds reopen, only deepen. So, I, I mean, I think this takes place. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it could be before or after. I don't know. You know, Matt says that the reading order here has been rearranged for chronological purposes. But there are a few times where I'm still a little confused by that. Because down the road, like way down in red, white, and black, there is a story about Barry Jean, the small time pornographer, the Farrell oh. Dalrymple story. Oh yeah. Which you would think would happen like, like that's the night that Barry dies. So the se I'm still a little confused about some of the sequencing. Well, the maybe there's, here. maybe it's, this one is just for black, white, and red chronological and that's maybe. for red, white, and black chronological. Yeah, so it just maybe. kind of starts over. All right. All right. So, yeah. so um, then he's filling him in. He's like, he's like squeezing with these terrible photos I've got of him. Grandel, that's a different guy. This is Bertrand. 
Bertrand. Yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah, yeah. This, no, so yeah. Bertrand is this Frenchman who cannot be squeezed. Yeah, and he by, frankly told Grendel to bugger off. Yeah, that's that's Grendel's mo. You get him. You get him. Get, get the snaps of him with the mistress and. Oh yeah, dude. He must have. Out of your hands. He must have a a lot of uh, c- cameramen working for him. He's yeah, well little... that well that would be a great story. You know, that's according like, to that one book, he had uh, a P. Parker working for him. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. Cool. So he's cool. got Spidey up there clinging to, to walls, taking photos of these people. In All right. So, so uh, Bertrand. Uh, oh, so Bert, they're gonna have Bertrand killed because he's yeah. not gonna. He's gonna be he, too difficult. He won't budge. Yeah. He won't be blackmailed. So he's like, just get rid of him. Just and make a just make an example out of him. And, and that again shows like that Grendel's not fucking around, and he has no feelings and no nothing. He's like, that won't work. That won't work. All right, fine, kill him. Next. This is a place where the lettering flow is so brilliant. Yes. Because it's really it goes from move on. Well, tomorrow night is exchange night for the Rosen kidnapping. Are you still escorting her? Yes, I'll deliver payment. And then it goes back to whoever's Schultz or whoever's right. Whoever's speaking. They really, they really expect a lot out of their readers on this one. And I, I mean, I, I would wage to say that the reader is the person that's reading. This is a good, they're like good at comics. Do you know what I mean? Like they're yeah, not, sure. yeah, they're not like uh, getting confused. Well, you have, yeah, I think good at comics is a pretty, is is apt <laughs> so if you're gonna read this or if you're gonna like like cerebus is the book that you got to be good at comics yeah in order to read but this is just as you know uh just as challenging because a big part of the conceit is we're gonna throw something different at you every single time right you know yes. <laughs> so so good at comics is is and good at story also i mean there's a lot of oh yeah a lot going on, on. The way that they bring up the Rosen kidnapping here, it almost makes it sound like it's been mentioned in Devil by the Deed, but I don't think it has. I don't think either, but um, it's really interesting. It's really interesting the way this story moves. It, it's almost like when you're reading it in the omnibus, you're almost like, did I miss like where the next story started? That's kind of what I thought. Like, uh-huh. like th- is this a new story now? But it's, it actually segues beautifully Like when I, re- when I went back to it. Yeah. It's really good. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, all right. So here's the here's the issue. Right. The Talking about the kidnap. That yeah. So, um, Grendel's gonna deliver the girl after payment. I'll bring her here until then. And then the guy says, "There's a problem." Remember last week when I told you about that arms deal? This is the first time we're hearing about it, of course. Right. So the arms deal is still scheduled to go through in two days. Um, but the, the, I think the seller found out that Grendel is, has arranged it. And as in, as a means of gathering more insurance, they've raised the price. Right. I, I think that's, I think that's what's going on. It seems like that. Yeah. Like the person who hasn't had any contact with Grendel was kind of like squeezing the other people trying to be like, yeah, and, if Grendel and, really wants this, he'll pay. Yeah. And Grendel says, but this is standard. This is, this is how we do it. I know, they know, they want to be difficult. Yeah, it's the normal cut for my territories. Well, and the guy's like, but they claim the problems on the other end and plead to be able to meet with you personally as the deal can only go down this Friday that would have to be tomorrow night. Well, that doesn't sound like a very good situation for anyone to put themselves in. No, and I'm doesn't. not a criminal mastermind or a detective. And even no. I can tell you that. Right. And Grendel's like, you told them no, right? And he's like, they, presi- they persist. It is a large deal. Yeah. So. So anyway, this is, this is the end of the meeting. Grendel says, sure, we'll do it. Grendel's got his own four-dimensional chess going on. Oh, yeah. Whatever. And anyway, uh, they have an apartment downtown where Mrs. Rosen um, is being kept. So they, they clear mm-hmm. out. I really love how and this is again me reading into it, but the design of the open doors looks like the devil's eyes. Oh, oh my God! Yeah, it does. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, just the, all the work with the giant windows. It's it's such a 
a gothic view that links up with you know devil by the deed that links up with matt's design choices it's just it's great we didn't even talk about the windows on the the first page yeah where he melts into the shadows and then the lighting like the dry brush on the table oh my god so really nice yeah Yeah. very well done all right so then the meeting ends and um they set up the meetup and they're like good evening and old lair comes in beautiful page as well here man yeah the red the red window negative silhouette of hunter is super cool Um, and this is one of the only times that i feel like we see hunter demask like unmask grendel take his mask off and reveal the 38 year old man underneath the there are a few times i can i would counter with and the first is when he's dying on the rooftop oh true yeah which doesn't really count yeah. And then it's the time where he and Larry are in the penthouse and he's unmasked holding the fork as they're like pointing at the map and Larry's like recording the, the Oh, that's the right. Seaboard master message. Yeah. It's like he really he I think that he really lets his guard down with Larry. I think that he gets off on the trust that like I can trust I can trust this guy absolutely. Um, And so he likes to skirt on the edge of discretion by just reminding himself of it. I don't know when he's around him. Yeah. And and, and it's, I mean, it's like you, you want that person so bad that you can trust, especially someone in Hunter's position. And it feels like Larry liked Hunter Rose already before he knew he was Grendel. And then he kind of had this inkling and Hunter sees that this guy must be smart if he could, suss it out that i was actually grendel so then you know i'm gonna give him the shadow of the doubt i'm gonna make him powerful and really he doesn't give larry any reason to to you know backstab him or to to not keep the truth well i think larry wishes he could be grendel probably yeah right yeah because larry what does larry get larry wants in he doesn't he probably doesn't need the money he just wants the kicks of yeah. of manipulating society. Well, because he was that kind of like socialite person. So maybe he was like craving like something beyond his rich lifestyle that he's so bored with. More champagne and caviar. Come on, I'm bored. Another high society party on the 75th floor. Type Hunter of- <laughs> Hunter asks Larry, do you have any information on what's going on with this arms deal? Have you heard of these parties that are screwing with my ground rules? No, never heard of it. They're from Central America. Um, but I've got other dirt on the deal. Oh, all right. So this is, this is important. Yes. Let's, let's, <laughs> Rosen's thing is a setup. Um, the, 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 I think that Rosen wants to comply with the blackmail kidnapping is a setup because I just spoke with Fisher, who's one of Rosen's financial guys. And he says there's been no decision about the liquidation of any of Rosen's assets. So they haven't, they haven't freed up the $5 million or whatever that Hunter is, is asking for here. Right, okay. for the, the release of his daughter. Yeah. So internally, um, they had an initial meeting to discuss the ransom demands, uh, but then they didn't follow through. Rosen does not mind juggling with his daughter's life. <laughs> My God. Yeah. This Rosen guy just is like, maybe they, they thought they were going to get some leverage over him by taking his daughter, but he doesn't seem to care. Let's draw a parallel between Sam Rosen and, um, and Barry Palumbo. Oh, uh, yes. As, as, as father figures who are embroiled with, New York and Grendel and crime and yeah, big business money, you know. yeah. And, and not and no time for the family. They're wow. just, yeah. So so Larry says that his source Fisher is is good because Larry's been working this guy for a while for for ner- for news and, and dirt. Anyway, Larry wonders about these two other clowns. I guess the South American guys. Right. Um, and their intricately balanced arms deal. It is a coincidence. So though I'm not totally sure what's going on, Larry's there to bail me out and say there is 
there is a strange connection between Rosen saying that he's going to do this, but he's not really going to do anything. And the South Americans, I think, who want to sell us weapons, but they don't want to play by our rules. Okay. Right. Exactly. That's, Something that's, fishy's that's going all on. I need to know. Yeah. If Larry, if Larry is given the straight poop, then I, I'll follow Larry. Right. And so Grendel's like, it's transparent. And so now he's devising this other plan. Miss Rosen will remain a guest of the downtown apartment. We'll dismiss all the guards tomorrow night and he'll, and Grendel will see to her comfort himself. What a gent. What a gent. So he goes there instead of going to the docks or instead of being at the docks when uh, the arms deal goes down or whatever goes down. And Larry here, Larry offers him a night of partying. Right. And he says, no, Stacy's sitter leaves early and I must contact Holt again to make new arrangements for the exchange tomorrow night. So right. still a genuine concern for Stacy. And I like just seeing this little window into like the actual life of Hunter Rose that, yeah. you know, other nights they do go to the clubs together. But for what purpose? He says later that he doesn't drink. Does Hunter oh, right, Rose, yeah. like, you know, have girlfriends? Drink. Does he? I have an answer for this. No, he does not have girlfriends. He was totally committed to Jocasta. He's totally committed to the romanticism of her memory. And in Shadow Grendel, there is another romantic uh, kindle. There's a kindrance of romance. And he struggles with, with that to be like, well, I sort of committed oh, yeah. myself to Batman Grendel too, because there's two oh, women yeah? and, and Bruce oh, that's right. is in with one and Hunter Rose with the other. Oh, okay. So it's a, maybe it's a, it's a half answer. I don't right. think that he's, I don't think that he's really into the meat market scene. No, he's to just a slave to the you. dance. He just yeah. loves music and he's <laughs> yeah. out there like, bish, bish, bish. I think he and, just wants and, to be seen. Yeah, yeah, kind of like Bruce Wayne, how he's the he's got the millionaire playboy thing, and he just does those things to make it seem as though he's like, you know, out getting drunk. Maybe Larry gets him like, you know, soda drinks to to make it look like he's drinking. And very, uh, very Bruce uh, Wayne. Very. Do you think this is a tangent? Do you think that Bruce Wayne is really straight? Do I think he's straight? Yeah. What do you mean? Like not gay? Yeah, not gay. Did it say he was? I think Batman is as gay as the day is long, and I think that makes him so not boring. I love it. So, Has that been covered in a story or something? Or? Uh, maybe in a Grant Morrison Playboy interview. But it's just like, to me, if, like, if everything that Bruce Wayne does is like a diversion, like the, the champagne, then I, it would stand to reason that if he's like recruiting young boys in his secret life and living it up with models as bruce wayne then like he's probably more interested in men than women interesting i digress that's my I mean, batman pitch <laughs> sure bruce wayne and and batman it's much like creed bratton in the office where you know many times there could have been a man or a woman in the situation right how, how is he to know <laughs> that's a I good was, creed line uh, well it's more you make more money as a, a leader but you have more fun as a follower ah uh, yes in the cult Interesting, interesting questions posed here on the devil in detail. Yeah, those are the details we're trying to get into. Those are the, the, those the nits are the, as well as the grits. Those are the pictures that will never be picked up. <laughs> I, you know, I did. I have been working my way through. I'm not a huge Batman fan or reader. I read Batman when my favorite creator has a 500 page hardcover. Right. That comes. I still out. Got, that still hasn't come to the shop yet. I've been I've been savoring it. Uh, because I never read the 2000s miniseries, and so I bombed through Batman and the Monster Men. I thought it was amazing, and I'm really doling out the final few issues of um, of the Mad, Mad Monk. Monk. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. <laughs> really good. He he does. Uh, he just has that. Just I mean, as he was so good with Grendel, I think it it rubs off on Batman and the darkness and the you know Gotham and the the fun that he has with the monsters and the villains and like the monster men, those big monsters. It's great. Yeah. They really, adapted that into Go on the show Gotham too, where they had, uh, Oh, no kidding. Yeah. So oh, I'll have to, I'll have to look into it. 
Shall we get back into the vagary? Yes, we should get vagarous. All right, so this is the first uh, scene change and kind of the structure of the story changes a little bit as well. It's later in the downtown apartment right. and he's with, what's her name, Rosen, something Rosen. Miss Rosen. Yeah, the daughter who the they've daughter. had kidnapped for weeks. Elizabeth. Right. She seems yeah. cared for, though. It's not like she's tied to a thing and being starved to death. She's well, she has been tied to a thing because she's oh, got red. She's blood. like feeling her. Yeah. She's got marks in red on her wrists. Oh, I don't see that. Um, well, in the first panel, she's rubbing her wrists. Right. And then on the next page, she's got marks all over her hands and wrists. Oh, wow. But she I, like, I see it now. but it's, I think the comment here is that this is the daughter of an ultra wealthy guy who doesn't give a shit about her. Gee, where have we seen that before in today's world? Yes. Um, and so there's a little bit of weird sadism that is allowed. You know, I can be in this elegant Grendel safe house, though tied up, like I'll still have my makeup and hair and my wardrobe you know, on points. Exactly. And I mean, there's worse places to be held captive, like say a dungeon or a basement or something. And yet she's in this apartment with guards, seemingly with food and drink and books, perhaps. Yeah. She's All seems, those. Yeah. The guards, they don't speak English. So they she don't speak English. So they can't even to. talk to her. Or maybe he just told them, don't talk to her. Probably. Yeah. I don't know. Who's, who's to say. So while they're, while he's checking in on, on his main asset at the moment. This is the, the ransom that isn't gonna be paid and so we gotta figure out how to use this chess piece. We're gonna cross cut in black, um, in black and seemingly like d deep maroon color holds yeah. to the scene on the docks. Right, which is, which Larry told him something's fishy about it and we're starting to see that yes, there are more than just the fish in the sea yeah uh, going on <laughs> it's fishy down there so uh you know we're crossing cross cutting we, we just kind of see cars and people milling about at first and then the backstory with her is kind of getting filled in like i don't like waiting on situations i'm not used to waiting on men and you've kept me waiting for three weeks but your father's a goat he's the greatest of all time yeah no, it's it's endearing. I'm not there, sure. There's not a sure bit of sexual tension. About. There is for sure a bit of sexual tension going on between these two. It feels like. Yeah. Well, also like the way he draws her. I mean, she 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 looks a lot like Christine in she a does. lot of ways here. Yeah. But like the especially way, especially that first panel. Yeah, I mean, she's got these like, she's dressed as Christine with like the boxy '80s shoulder pads and like the crew cut and then just like the detail that he puts like on her like the lace of her bustier and like like to show just how tight her pants are later on is like pretty it's pretty wild wild yeah. stuff dean model <laughs> weird wild stuff yeah. so then they're having a drink here uh he asks you know he pours her a drink um and then we flash back to the docks and they're like they're the cops Pickups don't see him. Where? Over there. Pickups don't know at all? Uh-uh. No need to Pick, be picky, Dan. So, pickups are undercover guys? Or? Well, I, I would think the pickups are the people who are picking up the weapons. Oh, right. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so there's a few different factions. So there's like the sellers and the buyers. Then there's like the cops hidden over here. And then there's like these other gangsters that are hidden over here. That the, are Grendel, the Grendel crew. The Grendel crew, right? Who are yeah. kind of like overwatching. The buyers are her dad, and the sellers are the people we were talking about earlier who told the South Grendel. Americans. Right. Yeah. Okay. Not the one that told Grendel to like bugger off. That was someone else. But these yeah. are the South Americans who were trying to raise the price. And so Grendel's guys are saying, we can kill everybody. Right. <laughs> like that's and, what's about to go down here. And also, as we turn the page, we see more of the docks and we see Argent. So then Where's that Argent? makes me. Oh, oh in the lower right left. On the next yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this makes me also think about the timeline and whether or not this was one of the things that Stacy overheard and tipped the police off about. Mm -hmm. So 
it seems like the police are always there and something's always going down. And, and that would make me think that that's a clue from Stacy. Yeah, I was, I was curious if this was the incident at the docks that I also sort of was over my head where it was like a bad PR situation for Argent. Because so they, then if that is true, then that would take pl- then that means this takes place after the way later. actor thing. Right. And that we were wondering right. about earlier. Yeah, after the Anson, uh, the Anson, Anson. whatever his name is. Right. Yeah, and which also, again, speaks to the sequencing of these short stories. Like, are they, like, are they really in chronological order? Because some of them seem to take place at different times for sure we'll see yeah we'll see well i think that we'll get some insight into that next week because paul chadwick has a story with stacy in it okay and so i think that we'll be able to tell based on stacy's mental state kind of where oh. this is okay cool so anyway and uh, here's where we here we learn that um grendel doesn't drink and he wouldn't he, w- he wouldn't dream of uh, poisoning poisoning her either, like it's just a cowardly kill out of sight out of mind. That's like not how Grendel kills. Though I did do it once that way, and I didn't like it. Yeah, I, I tried it once and didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like the still life here, uh, and how far the fork must have to be in the table in order for it's like five feet to be sticking up. Mm like in the air there you know i hadn't i hadn't thought of that yeah that's cool <laughs> is this um is this the first time in black white and red that we've seen argent that can't be uh no I, I think that we we saw him earlier in something oh well, yeah, well we see him in, we see him here in this battle but, yeah right but this might be the only time we see him live exactly like the first time the first time action. we see him in action yeah. in a in a sequence all right, so flipping back through here, I noticed that one week we had four stories all with sex scenes. This week's no sex scenes. No sex. Interesting. I like how <laughs> these guys are uh the guy on the left with no hat is holding like a straight up like barrel clip yeah, Tommy 1950s gun. Yeah. Tommy gun. Yeah. <laughs> it's that kind it. of confusion that makes us not like not know, you know, we have 80s fashion, but then we have 50s style guns. Are they just retro you know guys who like to use old gear you know that i can respect that you ready for a segue oh yeah in the next panel she says great view it's fake yes i figured you can't have me seeing where i am now can we so there's a giant holographic display of a different skyline (laughs) from out the window and you have to be on the ball or else it won't it's fake what do you mean it's fake yeah, it's like a, is that matte a matte painting? painting. Hell no, it's a hologram. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was good. We did not plan that. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah, yeah, cool. So, um, yeah, then he's you know making making some more small talk, yet so ingeniously not showing up to this like calamity of shit yeah. that's occurring. And in the next panel, <laughs> Arjun is raging against the Grendel people, and just you know he is getting savage. I really like how they turn off the red on this Argent close-up. That's a really interesting choice. Yeah, I was gonna. I was thinking that too. Like, why do you, why why do you think they did it that way? I think it like, puts what does you it mean? more directly in that moment. Okay. Because the way that the way that the the cross cutting is treated, it's not like it's a flashback, but it's a it's a different treatment from like what it, we're used to. Like and in so- a film, like this stuff is actually happening but the voiceover is still Hunter and this girl. Oh yeah. Very cool. So like we're kind of flashing there and we're seeing all this stuff happen, but we're still listening to Hunter mm-hmm. Randall and this, the lady talk. That might come across better if their dialogue, I don't think that we need the Grendel hoods dialogue, but if Hunter and Elizabeth's conversation had maybe carried over, right. It could have been, could have had a more effect. Yeah. Maybe it's next still, time it's still, it right. <laughs> it's still very cinematic. And I think oh, this yeah. is kind of like, this is almost even like Argent, like realizing that Grendel's not even here, oh, that kind of right. like they've been had. And so it's kind of like that close up of him in the now. I think this is that moment where Argent has a PR stumble 
I don't remember what it was. It was, oh. it was, let me, let's, let's go back. Let's go back to the videotape, Chet. <laughs> um, Okay, it is actually on page 19. The economy was, in general, very strong at this time, and Grendel made good use of it. His operations reached deeper and deeper into the bowels of the city. Other mobs of log standing began to feel the crunch. It was around this time that many of the more established families began to be swept into the tidal effect that Grendel was creating. As his empire slowly grew, Grendel began to look for Argent. As it was, Argent came after him. In the middle of the misty autumn night, the wolf uh, returned suddenly and boldly, exploding onto the docks of a seedy warehouse on the Lower East End. A boatload of smuggled aliens being unboarded found the intrusion rather disturbing. No, this is not. not <laughs> this is just another incident on the docks. Right, right. The docks is always <laughs> where the bad stuff happens. Yeah, right. So Argent snarls not in red mm -hmm. kind of puts us in that moment there is gore dripping off his teeth though there is and then we're back in the room with grendel and uh what's her name do we Eliz figure? elizabeth samuels yeah and this is a very like harrison ford kind of sexual tension it is it is moment here where they're very close and she's like no one's having a conversation with me and he says i am i love you i know you know kind of <laughs> yeah and then Grendel sits down to the piano mm. and starts playing The Entertainer. Yeah, he's playing Heart and Souls. <laughs> that would be a good time to play any of those. Yeah. What if he just sits down there and he's like, clink, clonk, clink, clink, And she's like, it's so beautiful. Or what he's actually like, can't play. No, he can do anything. He'd probably bust out he something. He could do anything, yeah. Well, um, she... She tells him that he's better that he than thinks he thinks. He is. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> he knows which is which is her like insinuating because she doesn't know Grendel and Hunter's kinda like Right. I think I'm well, like, really good. So Yeah. Well he sits down, oh, entertainment. Thank <laughs> yeah. you so much. Oh yeah. So, she's kind of so sarcastic. Yeah, she's not really having it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but she does like his playing. Uh, meanwhile, uh Arjun is back in red. It looks yeah, like yeah. he's eating straight up eating dudes i clawing out their hearts yeah wild okay and it's really getting to be a bad scene down here by the docks i mean it is getting crazy um yeah so she's he's being uh he humbly takes the compliment on his playing um and then he stops playing and then what does he do here? Look out the window? I think, I think he senses oh, I think he senses. senses that it's gone to hell. <laughs> I think that it's like, if I haven't gotten a phone call by now, like nothing good can come from, yeah. you know, not uh, being pinged. By it would ear. make sense to me too that maybe he has like a, a radio earpiece or something yeah. like that. You know, like, like maybe Larry can be like, we need you now or something like that. Well, he's got holograms time. and shit. He was definitely got exactly. a Dick Tracy earpiece, you know? Definitely does. And then well, he, he like is thinking about Stacy, I guess. Uh, we we kind of see. Um, I guess I'm not exactly sure what's being portrayed in this last panel. Was it them two in the window there? And like Stacy, I'm far worse than you think. Believe me. Oh no, no, Miss Rosen. Believe me, I'm far worse than you think. And yet there is a part of him that's good. You know, it's the desire to take care of Stacy. Right. Um, so maybe they're showing the dichotomy of Hunter right there, like actually, yeah. like he's telling her, like I'm, I'm actually the devil. You know, I'm terrible. I have no feelings. But then they're kind of showing to us, like that he does. We know he actually kind yeah, of has actually, a weakness. Yeah, he actually does care for. Her. Yeah. So exactly what went down in the dock? It looks like a total catastrophe. Um, is that is that money spread out of the briefcase, or is it packages of drugs, or hard hard um, to say. Yeah, it is. Maybe a, little, maybe a little bit of both. Agreed. All right, cool. Agreed. All right, so then he, he goes to great lengths to convince her, I'm much worse than you think. I'm very nasty, Miss Rosen. There is no kindness in me. There is no art in me. Art is humane, and I am inhuman. Ah, that there, just goes to show you that he is some, something. He's an inhuman. What a, what a mystery. Well, maybe the art of his writing is just a... 
a, a red herring from the devil. You know, oh, I can do it, but it means nothing. I only it do it to nothing. I only do it to make money. <laughs> just, just the four best-selling novels. Like they were just easy. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and um, yeah, Art is like, still raging though. He's yeah, like, but Grendel's raging too. Grendel looks pretty pissed. <laughs> yeah, he's screwing his yeah. his top back on, and yeah, it looks like he's about to spring into action. No. Uh-huh. Yeah. So Argent is here and then Grendel is also in red. There is only in me a contempt for the weak and a disgust of the brutish. I'm afraid uh, I'm afraid I place your father amongst the second and you well you are his daughter. Yes. Oh boy. Oh, it's getting darker and she's kind of like maybe almost was thinking like this is going okay, like I'm getting out of here but now she's kind of like uh, uh. Yeah, well she's she's trying to distance herself from her, from her father. father. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a quite some time since I've accepted any guilt for my father's wealth. I don't like having to suffer for what he has. Right. But you don't like having to suffer, but you're happy to take it, it and go yeah. out to Studio 54 every night. I'm not totally sure what he's getting at here. He's a he's a completely material person as well, so I don't know what <laughs> yeah i guess so the, you know the, oh like oh you enjoy blood money all i am is blood money so I'm not sure where his high horse comes from to be honest yeah. with you yeah uh his his vision that everything he's doing is like honest righteous quest yes so, like well he's, he's he's talking about what her father is not what he has um the second mm-hmm. is only a product of the first yeah we wouldn't be here right now three weeks into you being in this apartment you being miserable, um, if he wasn't such an asshole, um, he's ignoring you while trying to screw me. Yeah. I was diverted from the exchange tonight, it seems. It seems pressing business is demanded of me here, probably toying with her before he kills her. Um, And now the involved parties have refused to show her father. And believe me, Miss Rosen, they wouldn't dare. Not okay. It seems not. as though they may dare. Yeah. And as the next page, it isn't strange, Miss Rosen. Doesn't it make you wonder? Doesn't it make you scared? Bum bum bum. Let me get an excerpt from "Devil by the Deed" by Christine Spar. Would you care to read it for us, Ben? Samuel Rosen had, in fact, worked with the police to arrange an arms scam so as to draw Grendel off from the kidnapping scene, as the wolf was to be involved. Elizabeth's safety was feared for, should the two clash. The swindle was detected and tragedy resulted as the arrests were bloody and hostages not re- and a hostage not retrieved. Two days later, Elizabeth Rosen was found sitting in the waiting room of police headquarters, quite dead. From Christine Spar's Devil by the Deed. How did they get her in there dead? That's insane. Who's, well, uh, probably with Crooked Cops. Oh, yeah. Right? With cops who are on the take. Oh, um, Yeah, I love the twists that it's that Christine, you know, so like this, all these exchange, first of all, this 16 panel sequence is the longest uninterrupted that we get Hunter ever until Behold the Devil. Right. Which is, which is interesting. So we really get a sense of his his dialogue, his way of reading people, his way of doing business, his way of toying with people, his way of not being fucked with at all. Right. Um, and, and straight up saying to people, I have no feelings, as they right. try to appeal to his human qualities uh-huh. or whatever. I have um, no feelings. So it's, it's interesting because I'm sure that in his logs, it was not, I'm sure his logs do not describe the script of this comic book, right? That he might talk about what's going on so that Christine can sort of lay the groundwork. But what we've just read, not even Christine has had privy to. Like, so we, there's this weird sense of dramatic, of like, of dramatic irony, because we have information now that Christine only had presumably on the peripheral from whatever he wrote about. And now we get a view into those, those actual scenes. Exactly. Yeah, man, this was a really great story. And, and it really, it really 
it had like two chapters, two full things, you know, the, the how's your father type of thing at the beginning, the, the around with uh, the table around the horn, you know, uh, everything from his people. And then, and you know, then we get Larry, we get the demasking and then we get, you know, this, this whole nother adventure. So, and we get Arjun action, yeah. savage Arjun action, and nods to Stacy. Oh, so, yeah. it, like, everything. This is a quintessential Hunter Rose story because there's so – and plus there's an excerpt from Devil by the Deed. Right, so and just as they said it in here, it's kind of like, you know, maybe we hadn't got Hunter Rose for a minute. And so this was kind of like his, his you know, a glorious return to oh, Hunter right. Rose. And so yeah. do something big and awesome for this uh, Kamiko collection. Cool. I – I um I like this one a lot. Me too. It's I don't know. I respect maybe I respect it more than I like it. I, I hmm. do like it, but it's it's super ambitious and like its placement chronologically in terms of its publishing history is is real prestigious. Yeah, uh, and it's just it really takes you. It's really an adventure that takes you and grabs you and really brings you along for the ride. And there's a lot happening. There's a lot of characters. There's a lot of ins and outs of this, the crime family and uh, a lot showed, of what have you. Yeah, exactly. A lot, a lot of ins of, and outs and what have you. Yeah. Little things that got us questioning and, you know, like, do you want to go to the clubs? Like, okay. So that's a little window into his thing. Stacy yeah. Sitter, is that the lady that she goes on to kill later? Is that mm -hmm. someone new, someone older, someone different, you know, like really yeah. cool. A lot it's, going on in this. It is, it is dense in a similar way that Devil by the Deed is dense. And it is dense in a way that, well, I mean, the one, the Tim Bradstreet story is dense in its own way. Right. It's a but, challenging, it's, it's a challenging story. Right. For sure. And, it's a lot, and, and a lot happens over the course of two days or however many days it is. And mm -hmm. dig it. All right. Yeah, man. I mean, what a story. And I mean, that, I mean, looking at my watch here, we really went off about that, man. Maybe we'll have to save the rest for next week. There's always more. There's always another week. There is Seemingly. so much Grenland to do. Yeah. Well, cool. All right. Let's, let's get back to work. Let's get back to uh, reading more comics. Read more I comics, mean. make more comics. That's right. Vivat Grendel, Ben. Vivat Grendel, Eli. Vivat Thank you.